Welcome to Community Conversations here in Wallingford, Connecticut. We are live with Wallingford350.org. My name is Christine Mansfield. I'm one of the co-chairs of a new committee that's formed here in town. And here with me is Bob Devaney, our other co-chairperson. And welcome all of you to uh, this great conversation about the 350th birthday of Wallingford. So let's get started. We're about 1,500 days away from our big day. And those 1,500 days, obviously, are going to really go fast. You know, to fast forward, if we think about the day in 2020, 350 years that we're going to be celebrating from the day our town was founded. Now let's think back. In 1670, Bob, what was, what was Wallingford like in 1670? Oh, 1670, being the manager of the Center Street Cemetery, 1670, the town was pretty barren down below where we are actually filming this at this point. And we had the long highway, and most of the uh, people lived up on North and South Main Street in that part of town. And, you know, it was uh, a great time in those days because, you know, it, it was simple. You know, when we think back to pre-revolutionary days, I mean, you're thinking farming was the biggest business in town, right? I mean, crafting, farming. Farming was huge. There was a lot of plantations all over town. Um, Bob Beaumont, who's a dear friend of ours, uh, has told many of us about the different areas in town where there were so many different plantations and so many early settlers owned so much land in town. Uh, one of the ones especially is down on North Plains Industrial Road where that was a huge farming area. So it's, it just leads us back to what it was, the roots of, of town in, the, in those days. You know, when we think back to the founding families, I mean, we had a number of families that took a chance. They settled here in Wallingford on tracts of land and they said, this is home. And then they started building that out. So it wasn't, when we think about the land that used to be, that, that formed the descendants' families. And think about well, some of the families that, that we're going to be inviting back to celebrate with us. Well, think one of the biggest of families of Wallingford in, in those days was the Doolittle family. Mm -hmm. And ironically enough, today at the cemetery, I had a family member come in that was from West Virginia that's a direct descendant of the Doolittles. And, of course, we know of uh, a lot of the Doolittle families in Wallingford that are here today. Wallingford Glass mm -hmm. is a Doolittle family, and they're all direct descendants. So a lot of these folks are trying to come back to Wallingford, including the Whittlesees. The Whittlesee family uh, are planning coming here for our 350th birthday of Wallingford. You know, and when we think back to the town today, we think about boundaries, and we think about Route 5, and we think about Interstate 91. But back then, it wasn't just the town of Wallingford that we called Wallingford. What other towns did we have? Think about that. But you got to remember something. Wallingford encompassed a huge area in those days. Right. You know, we, Wallingford was part, we, we had Prospect, we had Cheshire, we had Tracy, we had Yalesville. There was portions of, uh, of Durham. There was also portions of North Brantford that Wallingford encompassed. At those days, Wallingford was one of the biggest towns in the colony. Mm -hmm. And you think back, and I think parts of Meriden might have also Meriden was too. The Meriden, they called it the Meriden Parish. And you think about that word. So parish today conjures up a religious territory, a church. But that's what the towns were called. And, and Wallingford was the center. And these parishes grew around us. Wallingford was really the start of it. Wallingford mm -hmm. was very much involved with the early days of the Stamp Act, way before 1775. And, you know, I love to talk about the fact that uh, our first commander of the second company, the Governor's Guard, marched through Wallingford in 1775, and that being Benedict Arnold. And a lot of us growing up as kids always looked at Benedict Arnold as a traitor, but he was a tremendous military guy. Mm -hmm. But he walked up, marched up with the guys, mm -hmm. 90 men from Wallingford headed to Lexington in 1775. So the true history of this town is enveloped around all of its early citizens. You know, and what I, I grasp onto that is that our citizens took a stand. They weren't afraid to drop whatever they were doing. They left their jobs. They joined arms to say, we're going to fight for something. And isn't that what, today what we celebrate in Wallingford? There's so much passion here in town. We have a precedent for that. But that's very true, Christine, because, you know, if you look back in the history of Wallingford from the Revolutionary War all the way up, we have a dedicated area in Wallingford called the parade grounds. And that's something that 
a lot of a lot of the newcomers that come to Wallingford really don't know about the parade grounds, mm -hmm. the history, and when people trained during World War One, mm -hmm. World War Two, Company K was at the old armory right. where the police station is today. I mean, it, it brings you back from every single um, conflict or war that this town or our country has been involved with. Wallingford citizens have answered the call. You know, when you think back, and, and we're going to celebrate a lot of this, and, and in our planning stages, we're, we formed a committee. And you think about this committee being formed in the mayor's office. We're now a town committee planning a celebration. But didn't Wallingford have a role in forming one of the first committees in the formation of our union? Didn't, isn't there some part Absolutely of our correct. Union? Wallingford definitely was involved with that. And I did mention Benedict Arnold before, but when the demanding of the keys happened in New Haven in 1775, our, our people here answer the call to Lexington, and our country, our state, the Commonwealth of Connecticut was formed. And here, here it is 234 years ago, but look what we're trying to do now. And it's, it won't be that far away, even though right now we stand, again, a, a few hundred, maybe almost like a 1,500 days away. Think about as we plan these days out. Now, we're going to fast forward in a few minutes and talk about June of 2020. But the excitement is starting today, right? But before we even talk about June of 2020, you know, we had a tremendous template. And I, we call it, I call this the template. Johanna Fishbein was the key person in the 300th birthday of Wallingford. Mm -hmm. uh, she was an amazing lady to work with. Mm -hmm. I, call her, I get a little melancholy when I talk about her because she really drove, drove the stake. She made it work. And uh, I was very happy to work with her. Many of my classmates at Lyman Hall and, and the early, actually Lyman Hall worked with Johanna to make this work. You had a huge celebration at Lyman Hall High School with a play that acted out for five nights. And as you know, we are planning the play for 2020. Yes. There are pieces. And, and in fact, if you look at this beautiful uh, piece of memorabilia from 1970, it wasn't just this year. When we're thinking about the 300th and the 325th, we've had so many examples of best practices to pick up from. And so we, we look back. Any fond memories? You, you were involved in the committee. We had a tremendous amount of fond memories. And being a younger fellow back in those days, uh, there was the, like I said, there was the, the uh, play at Lyman Hall High School. But we started off the 1970, the 300th birthday of Wallingford, with a, a parade. Now, Wallingford, you got to realize something about Wallingford. Wallingford has been a parade town mm -hmm. its entire life. Mm -hmm. One of the largest parades happened in Wallingford in 1982, which was the Loyalty Day Parade. Very veteran-oriented and so forth. But our parade in 1970 was almost six hours long. Mm -hmm. And the people, both, most of the people that remember that parade will remember all the, the people coming down the street, all the different towns that came. The Mummers came from Philadelphia. And, and various other groups. And, and weren't there some long beards? Wasn't there a bit of a contest oh. that I've, I've heard some memories from, I, I've had people stopping you just like you have left and right, bringing memories back. What were the dresses and the beards? Give you us a little remember, history. You have to remember something, Christine. There's, now let's see how we're gonna get your son and maybe my <laughs> son to grow uh, sideburns and a beard because there was a Brothers of the Brush. Yes. And, and a lot of other organizations, there was the, the Bells and different other ladies' organizations that got together and had, they were wearing the long dresses, the period of the time. And, you know, there's something very proud when you can bring in pieces of our current dress, the attire, and then having some fun with it. And when you think about that, it took partnerships. And back then, we had so many organizations come to the plate to say, let's celebrate. Let's think of some creative ideas. It's no different today. But no, it's no different today. It's, the difference is, is that obviously the people from 1970, those that are still around, are here to enjoy it. And now it takes the youth round, right now to bring it up. Mm -hmm. And you talk about those partnerships. Those partnerships exist for the fraternal organizations of this town. I mean, you have such a strong Elks Lodge in this town. There's a strong Moose Lodge in this town. You have the Pola PNA, the Polish mm -hmm. ladies. Mm -hmm. um, one of my classmates. Vicki Zolkowitz, mm -hmm. I love her. She <laughs> knows how to do it with the Polish girls. And, and that's, there's so many different organizations that are still very strong in Wallingford, including the Rod and Gun Club and so forth. These people are going to pull forth to make the 2020 spectacular. And, you know, it's been, uh, thinking 
through all the history and all the past events that celebrated the 300th, the 325th, and now we're focused on 350. And you know, you and I, we've been doing the road show, we've been visiting organizations, we've been meeting with town departments, meeting with citizens. Everybody wants to get involved. I mean, I think back to our Rotary presentation and the folks at the Wallingford Rotary were so eager to ask, what can we do? And we think of Dan Sullivan and some of the marketing gurus that have already stepped up to the plate so well. It's an interesting comment that was made when you and I sat there with the Rotary back in the wintertime. And it's funny because you and I have been met so many times with so many different people. And the Rotary looked at us, and when we put our presentation on, they said, you know, this is going to work, and this is going to be fabulous. And the amount of people right now that have stepped up the plate to make this work, it's just, it's amazing. But it tells the true character of our town. It really does. It makes you, gives you goosebumps. And we've talked about goosebumps for a long time because the character of Wallingford is starting to exhibit itself. You know, it has. And it, and it hasn't stopped. I, you know, we can't say enough. I mean, what town department hasn't already said whatever you need? I mean, think about it. Think about all of the folks who have already come forward. And these are very busy departments in charge of maintaining our, our health and our fire and our safety already coming to the well, table. Well, I think, I think it's absolutely amazing. It's amazing when you and I sat with the police chief and the fire chief and their staff. And before we even projected what we were trying to accomplish, <laughs> they came right out and said, listen, 2020, 350th birthday in Wallingford, we're going to make this happen. And we will do whatever we can to make it work. You know, it's amazing. And, and we talk about partnership uh, because certainly that was the spice of what worked, the volunteerism, from the youngest to the oldest getting involved. And we look at the formation. I mean, as we think about a committee, though, a lot has changed. We've mm -hmm. got technology on our side. For the first time, and you think about the diversity, we've got more than 45,000 people in a community. So we've tapped into something a little bit different. We didn't have the internet for the 1970s. We didn't have the internet back in the, the 300s. Well, I, I have and to here make, we are. I have to make a comment about that only because, you know what? Being a fellow that uh, grew up in a postal family, yeah. my dad being a postmaster, yeah. my many years, I hate to say it, but we haven't used a stamp to make this work yet. No. And both you and I both know that the amount of information that's out there right now and, and how we're transferring back and forth has been amazing and quick. You know, and, that's, and it's interesting. We're, we're, in a sense, we're testing the concept of a paperless committee. Um, because, you know, again, we've, we've visited with so many people face to face. We never lose touch with, with the importance. Our public meeting has happened, and we're getting so much interest from, from sitting in, in Half Moon in our various restaurants. But we're able to tap into, I'm, I'm going to tweet live in a minute while, while Bob shares a story, Twitter and Facebook. So for everybody out there on social media, if you're finding us on the web, you know, our website, wwwwallingford 350 again, period, O-R-G, and using the hashtag, which is the number sign, right? Because you and I would say it looks kind of like a railroad track. Yes, it does. But if you find us on Twitter, if you find us on Facebook, you're going to find that we have a presence in every single channel you possibly can with Wallingford 350 as our moniker. But we also have a physical presence, don't we? We do. But as when you're getting ready to Twitter right now, let me just make a comment about something that's obviously when this, when this comes out. This is important. I know it's important. But when this comes out, the parade will always be, will be over by then. Yes. But we, we have used so many different organizations in town, especially town organizations, one of which is Beth Devlin at the library. Yes. Now, Beth Devlin, her staff, not her staff, but part of the staff mm -hmm. and, and the manager and so forth, they've all come forth. Now, the second company, Governor's Foot Guard, put a display on in the library we've got a cannon in the library and and we're just to get people is excitement brewing yes. for the 21st of may and you know as that that the energy that you and beth created that exhibit with was amazing and to see memorabilia and again more so than just a plate to see those uniforms from revolutionary periods to see a cannon i mean when was the last time we saw a cannon on north main street I mean, it's been a few hundred well, years. Well, actually, there is a can up on North Main Street. All right, all right. So we'll, 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 we'll let it go. We'll let it go. <laughs> That's okay. But I'm just saying, and on, you know, again, as we were looking through this, when you start to look at that exhibit, in case the public missed it, they can always stop by the hubcap. We're going to push some of that, that, that material and some of those artifacts, and we're going to display at our headquarters at the hubcap. Well, let's talk about the hubcap. Oh, 
The hubcap. Outstanding. Center of town. Downtown. Sitting there with Liz Landau. With all the availability that we have to put on a, a great meeting. Mm -hmm. And things have been phenomenal. We, uh, when we've had our last couple of meetings, the team, and I always, I, I really push the idea of the fact that this is a team. Mm -hmm. And without a team, you can't make this happen. I mean, you and I are co-chair. Okay, fine. We can't do everything. Without the team, without the people present, you mentioned Dan Sullivan. Dan Sullivan jumped up on top of this right away to help us. I mean, what a great guy. Part of the Rotary, part of the town, the uh, Chamber of Commerce, and so forth. And it's been wonderful. You know, and you, when you pull in folks, you know, Liz Landau and Steve Knight and the great folks down at WCI, when you look at um, public celebrations, and, and again, Mrs. Devaney being um, one of the chairperson, and all of the excitement that, and the energy and the expertise that that whole group brings, and we think about John Golak and Michelle Borkman over at Park and Recreation, but energy. Look at the context. Energy. I mean, it, we're at a point where you and I have, I hate to, I hate to use a town name, but we, you and I have a seat at Half Moon. I think they're going to put our names on the table <laughs> right. because we met, met with so many people. But yes, correct. Lorraine Devaney, Carolyn Mazzoni from Public Celebrations, all these different other organizations that we've met with that are really jumping on board. John Golick, Michelle Borkman. I mean, Park and Rec is helping. Now, let's not, let's not forget one thing. We have a tremendous week planned, mm -hmm. a tremendous week. Yeah. Ronnie Piazza, an old name from Wallyford, great softball coach and so forth, good Lyman Hall guy. Ronnie Piazza, with his team, is putting together youth activities for that entire week. I mean, where, what better can you get? Now, not just, we'll fast forward to June in just a minute, but we're going to build excitement every year leading up to that. So this year we ha have our military parade, we have the kickoff, we're getting all of our pieces. Let's, let's tease 2017. Should, we've got, should we've got we some, tease the I, town of Wallingford a little bit? I think we need to give them a little bit. Well, let's, let's just see if to, some, of those let's people, sneak a little bit out. some of those people in Wallingford can remember the block dances we used to have behind Kaplan's mm -hmm. in the day. And I always say in the day. Of course, probably a lot of kids don't want to hear in the day anymore. But we're going to have a block party on South Main Street in June of 2017. Mm -hmm. And coupled with that, Chris Brosnan, who is a mainstay at Wallingford Buick, He's been selling cars, I think, since he was 12. But he's going to put together a huge car show with the Wallingford Street Riders and other organizations. Downtown is going to be bustling. You know, and we're doing this for a few reasons. One is we want to get some learnings. We're, we're kind of, we're giving a sneak peek at some of the activities that might be happening as we lead to 2020. But there's a lot to celebrate. I think we can't do it in one week. 350 no. years, our good people deserve more than one event. So I think we're going to see some events. They're going to look for more information coming from us. But what else? Well, I really think that, you know, as time goes by in the next couple of years, like you said, we are really trying to get the, get the fire started. Yeah. And we're starting to fire by the parade in May. And, and then from there, we're moving on to a car show, a block party. And that is going to work perfectly for us. Right. We're looking at a country fair in town before 2020 mm -hmm. and other ideas. Well, let's not forget. I mean, we, we do love our dishes. We love our co-branding. We're going to have a store. The store is going to reopen at Hubcap maybe next year. I mean, we're thinking that we're going to be selling co-branded Wallingford 350. These are going to be things that you can, again, not get your hands on until you get to the headquarters. But we're going to be opening up a store. We are definitely opening up a store. And again, when this is... Uh, May 21st, there's going to be a special postmark in Wallingford yes. for the kickoff of our, mm -hmm. our birthday. But the other thing is, in 2020, there'll be another postmark from the post office commemorating the 2020, the 350th birthday of Wallingford. You know, and it's so exciting. Because, but, you know, I think, I think we've got to start talking about 2020. I think we've got to start letting the public know, you're going to mark your calendars for next June, for sure, for 2017. But I want all of Wallingford from June 20th to June 27th in 2020, you will not take vacation. Our kids, thank you, Dr. Menzo, but our kids are gonna graduate from high school and all the schools will be let out by then. Mother Nature will help us. But we are gonna have something planned every day of that week. Well, you also realize that Dr. Menzo guaranteed this. He did, I think. I no, think. no, we, had, we have this. He and did good, guarantee this. Weather. But let's look at that, okay, because our time is getting a little short here, but a sneak peek of 2020 celebrations. On Saturday, we're going to have a parade. In the 300, in the year 300, we only had, we had a six-hour-long parade. I mean, we'll probably cut this in half a little bit. We have a lot of people planned coming to this parade, 
we want your involvement. If you know someone who wants to be involved with a parade, if you want one of your ethnic groups to be involved with a parade, let's do it. Get involved with us. Get to, get to one of us. It's easy. We're easily reached. Now, that's not just participating and cheering us on. We want floats. I mean, think we about all floats. of these, these organizations. We want everyone involved. Absolutely. The idea yep. here is everyone involved. Matter of fact, my high school class, I guaranteed my high school class we're going to have a float in the parade. I think I can see a contest brewing. Oh, there's a big contest brewing. I can brewing. see a contest. Absolutely. So that, that just kicks the event off. That's day one. That's day one. Day one. So Sunday, Jerry Farrell is, is going to take over Sunday for all the religious activities, and every church in town is going to get involved yeah. with bell ringing and so forth and get involved with, with the, the day, the day two of the 2020. Yeah, and we think back to the the foundation in 1670, and, and, you know, the religious and the spiritual part were a fabric that weaved into all of Wallingford, and it's going to be weaved back into the 350 as well. What a, a, what a tremendous day. fabric. What Remember that. It's, what that's how this town started. Mm -hmm. Now, we move to day three. It's History and Diversity Day. Mm -hmm. Maria Harlow, what an incredible lady, an incredible meeting with her. And just think of the things that are going to come with that, the different groups of town. And you making know, it work. And it's exciting to think about where Wallingford started and how rich in diversity and how many things that we can celebrate, how many different groups of people, how many parts of history and culture that we can weave into our diversity day, including some special mentions for the, the other towns that were originally part of it. So you know, I think we're going to have to reach out to Meriden and Cheshire and Durham and Prospect. Correct. And let's get some of them involved in there as well. But now we move into Tuesday. And Tuesday is Ladies' Day. And many of my classmates in 1970 were involved with Ladies' Days. Oh, yeah. The Wallingford Bells. Oh, yes. And the long dresses. And a tea. Well, a tea uptown. And, and think about who, who's, who's already brought some interest in this. When we think about D. Pryor over the chamber, and we think about our Wallingford community women, and Cindy Parent and her group have really jumped to the table and said, we're going to chair this. They already have 100 years of history under their belt. And to bring that richness to our table, I can't wait. We move into Wednesday with the Chamber Industry and Agricultural Day. Now think about this. We have Steve Knight. Oh who's jumping on board with this. Yeah. He's retired, but we brought him out of retirement to get him to work hard on this. And Joe Jeremiah. Joe Jeremiah, now there's a tremendous amount of, of names in this town, from the cooks, the walls, the cellars, all of these guys, and I know I'm missing a few, and I apologize for that, but you know what? We've had some tremendous farming families in this mm -hmm. town. You know, and you think about the silver industry. Oh. oh my goodness! I, you know, and, and to bring that forward, think about how many businesses. I mean, the Economic Development Committee with Don Rowe is is chomping at the bit with the chamber to bring all of that together. In fact, I think the chamber is moving their their annual business meeting to be that Wednesday in the year 2020, and they're going to think about they're brainstorming already extravaganza. When we met with Dee, what did oh. she say? Oh, we want to have it that week. She amazing, and I can't and think of a fantastic. better team to lead that effort. Hey, we're going to move on to uh, Thursday, Senior Day and Bargain Day. Yes, and, you know, think about that. Now, you know, again, Bargain kind of conjures up that we're going to have a sale, and you think about the good work that Liz Landau and her group does and with the stroll and elements. And, and without taking anything away from our established Wallingford, Celebrate Wallingford Days and the strolls, you can imagine something very special being planned for that. Shoppers are going to want to be ready with their pocketbooks and their purses. There's and absolutely no question about that. It's going to be special. It okay, really Friday. The culmination of Youth Day, the last day of all these different ideas that people are talking about. We want to have a block dance that Friday night uptown. Mm -hmm. And there's a, a little surprise brewing, and we really can't let that out of the bag not at this yet, point. Not yet, not yet. There's a surprise brewing for the center of town. Yes. Well, and of course, you know, no celebration is complete without some fireworks. We can tease it a little bit. But these are not going to be your ordinary fireworks. No, they're not going to be ordinary fireworks. And, and I really believe, Christine, that there's the people who are going to come into downtown in droves. Mm -hmm. If this works, what yes. we have planned, it's going to be something to remember. It's going to be epic. And, you know, th you think about the class, um, and, and just to touch on youth for a minute, I mean, you've got a, a class, a high school class graduating in the 350th year. We're going to envision some very special things happening just for, you know, j just to celebrate that, that aspect of being part of history, right? But before we get to the last day, I think it's very important, and you and I have talked about this wholeheartedly, yeah. that we need to really reach out to the class that's coming in yeah. to high school 
this September because they are going to be the graduating class of 2020. You know, I, I look at the full spectrum. We were going to have the kids involved, and then I go to Bill Viola and Debbie Volker's group at the Senior Center and everything they're planning, you know, a viewing party for the fireworks. And the energy of, of every citizen involved, that's what we want. We need everybody. We want everybody coming down to the hubcaps, signing up. Go to the website, sign up. Everybody has to be here. It okay. wouldn't be a party without it. So, you know, we only have a few minutes left here, so do you think it's important that we drop the bomb now? I think we can, we can seed it a little bit. Seed it a little bit? Yeah, let's give, let's give a little peek and then have them come back. Okay. My peek, my peek is going to be this. The last day, yes. the last night, I mean, it's going to be a tough week, but there's going to be a ball yes. in the center of Wallingford. It's going to be on South Main Street, part of the historic parade grounds, but on South Main Street. Mm -hmm. It's going to be fabulous. We've got to make it so that every person in this town that wants to come can be there. And you think about it. We started our conversation a brief half an hour ago about mm -hmm. the long road. And it's going to the come. The long highway. The long highway, thank you. We're going to come along full circle. Yeah. And from the, from the military parade that we just celebrated, mm -hmm. where a um, special military review, and you followed the same route, and we're going to end on June 27th on that same spot to, to celebrate truly the founding of our town. So we need to give a plug a little bit to our co-chair of the ball. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, Cindy Semero, Betsy McCauley are, are already thinking. Betsy McCulley's already got her feet wet with the 325th. This is not her first rodeo. This is not her first rodeo. No. We have, we have got the creme de la creme when we start thinking about the volunteers. And, and again, we need help. We need every person we need a lot to help. come to the table and, and, and really start thinking about what is their footprint in this history. I want every footprint in that road. I look at Cindy and Betsy. Who better to do this? Yeah. And let's give John Harasik, mm -hmm. Johnny oh, Ross, John. a shot. Because you know what? He's jumped, up, he jumped forward to help us with the block dance, with the ball, and it's open at this point. We need all the help we can get. You know, we do, and, and I have to say, when, when Mayor Bill formed the committee and really got the ball rolling, it, it, you know, to his credit, um, this is no small feat. Um, no yeah. stone can go unturned, and, and we have the benefit of time right now to really put as much thinking in as possible. We need, we need ideas. We would love the energy from every person to come on down and help us plan. Sadly enough, time is really going to go by quick. No it, no, it is. You know, and when we start thinking about this formation, and we think that we're 1,500 days or so away, and, and it's, you think, oh, we've got plenty, but uh, no ideas is too small right now. Absolutely correct. And we really welcome everyone to be part of the 350th birthday of Wallingford. Yeah, and let's remind them. So if you're looking online, I know everybody's got a smartphone, you know, it seems. But, you know, www.wallingford350.org, that's going to be one of our monikers. Can I make a comment to Jason Zandry? Jason, a shout out. Um, again, he's our kind of our, our default technical guru, but he really um, helped us get our, 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 our strategy in place to support. But technology's here. We can't deny it. No. Um, but he really was a godsend. It's going to move us forward, though. No, it is. And, you know, again, every paperless item, you know, our committee, the, the directors have been amazing. Um, we've got a group of volunteers who are becoming um, really just, again, leaders and consultants for this committee to make decisions and seize upon the volunteer opportunities. What a great group um, to keep building on. Last thing I want to say is it's a pleasure to be with you, work with you, co-chair. Likewise. And uh, bottom line is, Wallingford, we want you. Yes, it's time. Be part of this. It's important. And where is your footprint? We want to see it on the long road. And we would love to visit with you either at the Hubcap. Keep an eye on all of our meetings are public. Um, they're posted through the town clerk. They're posted through the channels. And they're also available online and at the Hubcap headquarters. We want you there. We're very reachable. You're going to be a part of history, Wallingford. You're going to do it again. Thanks for being a part of our community conversations. <laughs>